Welcome to Devotions from Israel, a five-minute word of encouragement. Today's devotion comes from Jeremiah chapter 7. The prophet Jeremiah was someone who lived at the end of the 7th century into the 6th century. He was a, a prophet who offered many words of warning to Judah, especially in light of the incoming Babylonian invasion from the north. However, the heart of Jeremiah is seen, his passion is seen in chapter 7 of his book. Now, this also is a passage or chapter that references Shiloh, which hundreds of years prior to Jeremiah was where the tabernacle was located. It, The tabernacle, that is, was destroyed in about 1080 or 1070 B.C., it stood there for over 300 years at Shiloh after the time of Joshua. But these are the words of warning, and there is a life lesson and a word of encouragement to be found in these rather tough words that he shares with his fellow Jerusalemites. This is the text of Jeremiah 7. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, stand at the gate of that Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah, who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal <coughs> with each other justly, if you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place." In the land I gave your ancestors forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal and murder and commit adultery and perjury? Will you burn incense to Baal and follow other gods that you have not known? And then come and stand before me in this house, which bears my name and says we are safe, safe to do all these detestable things? Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. You sense the passion here at this point in Jeremiah's heart. He continues, Go now to the place in Shiloh, where I first made a dwelling for my name, and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people Israel. While you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, what I did to Shiloh, I will now do to the house that bears my name, the temple that you trust in, the place I gave to you and your ancestors, and I will thrust you from my presence just as I did all of your fellow Israelites, the people of Ephraim. So do not pray for this people, nor offer any plea or petition for them. Do not plead with me, for I will not listen to you. Do you not see what they are doing in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? You sense the passion once again of Jeremiah. But the key, I think, in this passage is to remember what happened at Shiloh when this boy named Samuel was a young boy in the 
ta- uh, temple or tabernacle itself, the Mishkan, as it's called. God called to him. At first, he thought it was Eli, the priest. And then Eli instructs Samuel to say this. Next, the next time you hear this voice, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. That's the key. Samuel listened and responded to the voice and call of God in his life. In fact, one word he used is hineni, which means I'm ready, I'm eager, I'm willing to hear your voice and respond to it. But why Jeremiah was so distraught over his people, both in Judah and in Jerusalem, is because they did not listen to the voice of God. They did not heed his decrees, nor did they obey his law. The word of encouragement for us is to make sure that we are responding to God, and that starts with listening to him. Now, how do we listen to God? Does he still speak audibly to us? Certainly he does through his word. He speaks to our spirit. And as we hear the words of God, as we read the scriptures, we are to listen as Samuel did way back in Shiloh. And if we listen, we will find instruction. We will find joy. We will find encouragement in our walk of faith as we strive and are inspired to follow God in every detail of our life. So be listening to the voice of God through his word and respond by saying, Here I am, Hineni. I'm here, I'm eager, and I'm willing to serve you. Be encouraged that God is still concerned with our walk of faith, and he invites us to respond with a listening ear and a responding heart. Until next time, Shalom.